one of countless ambulance calls overnight in Gaza. This is Jabalia. This is genocide, not war, genocide. It's an attempt to displace the people of the Gaza Strip, but this will not happen. Tens of thousands are fleeing from north to south Gaza before the land invasion Israel threatens. But that's a long way from the 1.1 million who live here. Safad filmed this for us, she and her three children getting out. Unlike so many, they have a car and fuel. The World Health Organization says the forced displacement by Israel of seriously ill and injured people is, quote, a death sentence. <laughs> Recognizing that, perhaps, Israel said it left two roads open to the south. <laughs> but just yesterday, Gazan officials say an Israeli strike hit a convoy of fleeing civilians, killing 70 people. The US and Qatar are attempting to open the Rafah crossing in South Gaza into Egypt. But Egypt won't accept a mass influx of refugees, and so they wait. The Egyptian government is using uh, this issue to try to pressure the Israelis through the Americans, um, if not directly, um, and lobbying the international community for uh, humanitarian aid and for support in creating a humanitarian corridor. Even if it opens, Rafa looks like an escape route only for foreign passport holders. Every place I go, I go run away and I just find bombs and I find dead people. And like maybe one day I'll end up like them, but it's a really scary thing for me. <laughs> Waiting too on the other side, trucks full of desperately needed aid, supposedly heading north for Gaza. <laughs> Clinics and hospitals across the Gaza Strip now brought to the edge of being overwhelmed. We got through to the British doctor, Dr. Ghassam Abu Sita, at the main Al Shifa hospital. Unless there is respite, there is going to be an infectious diseases public health catastrophe in the hospital. The bodies are stacked up, people are too afraid to bury their dead. You drive past one of the uh, destroyed buildings, the, the stench of, of decaying bodies is, is very, very, very prominent. It seems that they no longer are capable of, able of, to take out the bodies. Gazan authorities say around two and a half thousand people killed, more than 700 of them children. At least 9,000 injured. But Gaza is not the only front. Nearly 60 people have been killed this week in the West Bank, and today Hezbollah and Israeli forces exchanged rocket and artillery fire across Israel's northern frontier with Lebanon. But it is Gaza awaiting invasion. Prime Minister Netanyahu, widely blamed by Israelis for allowing Hamas to invade, now stealing his troops for war. Are you ready for what's coming? He asked them repeatedly. With a third of a million reservists called up, Israeli tanks, artillery and infantry assemble close to the border for their latest invasion in a series since Hamas took power in Gaza 16 years ago. Alex reporting there. We were hoping to speak to an Israeli government spokesman. He's just had to run away from his studio position to get into an air raid shelter because of alarms. Um, let's go then now to Sekunda Kamani, our foreign affairs correspondent who joins us live from Ashdod, just north of Israel's border with Gaza. And Sekunda, you've also had alarms apparently. Yes, that's right. More rockets fired over today. Uh, just a, around half an hour ago was the latest barrage. Uh, but we also saw Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, as we saw in Alex's report there, visiting southern Israel for the first time. And he's been heavily criticised for not having met with families, for not having attended funerals. Lots of people here blame him personally and certainly his government for not having done more to prevent this 
awful massacre. And today we've also been hearing from a senior security official who admitted that the assessment that Hamas was deterred and weakened by previous bouts of clashes with the Israelis was wrong. The conventional wisdom had been that Hamas was primarily interested in improving the economic situation of people in Gaza. Instead, we know they were planning and plotting this awful attack. That same security official also said that just a few hours before the attack began last Saturday, the head of Israel's domestic intelligence service, the Shin Bet, was called in at 4 a.m. for an unscheduled briefing. But uh, although new intelligence was coming in, it didn't warrant mobilization, he said. And is there any more information, Sikanda, about when this offensive from land, sea and air might start? Well, the Israeli military are not going into operational details. It does appear from what some officials have been saying that that deadline for evacuation from the north of Gaza to the south of Gaza has been somewhat extended. The Israeli military saying, as you pointed out, Matt, that they've drawn up plans for this offensive uh, from land, air and sea. Also getting more insight into what the, the aims of this operation might be, with officials here saying that Hamas will no longer be in power uh, over Gaza by the end of it. What comes next? Who comes next in power? That's a big question. I mean, reoccupying the Gaza Strip would be very challenging in the long term for Israel, to say the least. The Palestinian Authority, who are in charge of the West Bank, they're already deeply unpopular. Mm. Sikanda, thanks very much indeed. Well, with me now here is uh, from the charity Action Aid is Gemma, Gemma rather, Kosyals Gulian. Thank you very much indeed. I hope I didn't mangle your name too much. Uh, thanks for coming to our position. What are you hearing from your people inside the Gaza Strip? Well, when we managed to have contact with them, yeah. uh, well, what we are hearing is that they are desperate. They don't know what to do. Um, they say that they, they are dying, dying slowly. So it's really worrying. Dying slowly? Yeah, that's what they are And doing. have they evacuated or are they still staying put? Four of them, they have evacuated towards the north, uh, but one of them is staying. Right. Uh, towards the south, the south, sorry. And one of them is staying in the north. And, and why is he or she staying in the north? Because he has a big family, yeah. uh, he has no the same um, capability yeah. to, to move. Uh, means of tra transportation were scarcing. Yeah. So yeah, it's not the same for everyone. Like the most vulnerable, vulnerable people, they have no means. Like for example, people with disabilities, yeah. uh, women, pregnant women, elderly, or there's something like thirty-five thousand women in the Gaza Strip apparently who are who will give birth at some stage in the next few months. That's a that's a big number. Yeah. Yeah. And you're concerned about them, obviously. Of course, of course. And do we know how these people are being moved? I mean, and what about the hospitals? I mean, the hospitals are absolutely jam-packed with patients yeah. at the moment. Yeah, they are. Have you heard about their evacuation? Yeah, one of our partners, by the way, it's uh, one of the hospitals. It's from our partner. Mm -hmm. They have been told yesterday to, to evacuate the hospital. They didn't do it. Uh, today they received another alert. Mm -hmm. They didn't evacuate, they are still treating the patients. Uh, but yeah, that's that's super worrying because yeah, it, that's uh, violating the international law. Right. Uh, and, yeah. and do you have any idea of what the reality for two million people pushed into the south of the Gaza Strip, but eventually if they get there, what will that look like? No food, no water, no, uh, no electricity? Desperate, I would mm. say. Yeah, desperate and panic because they don't know what to do, what will happen. Uh -huh. Yeah, they don't have water, they don't have um, food, they don't have anything in there. Uh -huh. And the, the South, it's worth to mention that mm. okay. it, it has been already... Uh, okay. Yeah. All right, listen, thank you very much okay. for coming. Good luck with okay. everything. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, Gemma uh, Gulen Gesells. Joining me live now from Tel Aviv is Elon Levy, an Israeli government spokesman. Mr. Levy, thank you very much for coming on the programme. I gather you just had to run to the shelter to escape another air raid. I'm sorry, I have audio interference in my ear. I have another feed. I can't hear okay. the question. Oh, okay, all right, we'll try and sort that out. I'm very sorry. Can you hear me now? One, two, three, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now, Mr. Levy? Okay, all right. We'll, we'll try and get back to you later, Mr. Levy. I'm sorry about that. We'll try and sort it out. Uh, let's go to Alex in London. Alex. Yeah, we hope to join that one later on. Here, tens of thousands of people have been protesting across the country, demanding an end to Israel's military action in Gaza. Demonstrators chanted pro-Palestinian slogans and heard calls from world leaders to condemn what is happening in the Strip. Police issued warnings ahead of the protest that anybody showing support for Hamas would be arrested. Leo Chatterjee was at the march in central London. Stop bombing Gaza! Stop 
if death toll measures the violence of conflict. Free, free. Perhaps protest measures its resonance. This is London. This is Kolkata in India. Dusseldorf in Germany. And Tel Aviv in Israel. It's hard to put an exact figure on the turnout here in London, but the chanting thundered from start to finish. The protest was organized by the group Palestine Solidarity Campaign. Israel's told us it's now at war with the Palestinian people because of what happened last Saturday, but the reality is Israel's been waging a war against the Palestinian people for decades through a process of an enactment of a military occupation and the imposition of a system of apartheid. Amidst the crowd, signs are plenty that this is not as cut and dry an issue as many might perceive. And even on that point, not everyone agreed. Do you think that there is a disconnect between the complex politics of this issue and the humanitarian kind of situation on the ground, the loss of lives, the terror that people are feeling on both sides? I reject that it's complicated. It's not Jew versus Arab. It's human rights against oppressors. Though there was overall unity in today's messaging, there was nuance to people's motivations for coming. And this is your daughter? Yeah. So it's important for you to come out and be here together? Yeah, I think this is the minimum we can just do for the people there. We can't do any more thing. Because I'm Irish and I can't stand what's happening to Palestine, to Palestinians right now. It's absolutely disgusting. Honestly, just, I'm outraged. I'm just sick of it. Just, people need to see this. It's not, I brought my children here. They're, they're learning right from wrong right now. I come from a marginalised community myself. And so where I see oppression happening, um, I don't, yeah, I don't think it's fair. We mourn the death of all civilians. It doesn't matter who they are, because we believe in the dignity of every human being and that every human being should be able to live in freedom. Whilst a lot of the people that we've spoken to today have professed the importance of empathy for all, recent hate crime data represents a different reality. The Metropolitan Police says that in the last two weeks, incidents of anti-Semitism and Islamophobia have drastically increased compared to the same two weeks last year. By the time the protest reached Downing Street, the police presence was greater. One protester was removed for wearing a mask and immediately released. A power is in place which requires a person to remove items which conceals their identity. And whilst the majority of protesters sent a message to the UK government, a minority at Trafalgar Square threw flares and sticks at the police. Next weekend, we understand, there are plans for an even bigger protest, by which point the death toll will be higher too. Ria Chatterjee reporting. Well, joining me live now, I hope, from Tel Aviv is Elon Levy, an Israeli government spokesman. Welcome to the program, Mr. Levy. I'm glad we've sorted out the technical issues. Um, the, the people that we've spoken to, including those in the Israeli army, uh, including at the moment, actually, you know, waiting to go into Gaza in this very, you know, difficult moment, are so critical of your boss, Prime Minister Netanyahu, are so critical of the intelligence and security failures that led to the atrocious attacks a week ago. What can you say to them to reassure them as they march into the Gaza Strip? You are right to speak of the absolutely atrocious massacre that took place last week. I think it was rather difficult to understand from the report we just saw of the enormous protests on the streets of London supporting Hamas that Israel suffered the single worst massacre of Jews since the Holocaust last week and the world's worst terror yeah. attack in world history after only 9-11. Yeah. Israel is a country that is yeah. still in shock. It's a yeah. country that is grieving, mourning, and it's a country that has come together in an extraordinary way uh, to help to support this effort and make sure that we bring our captives home, make sure that we end Hamas so it can no longer carry mm. out such atrocities again. 
there will be a time for learning lessons. Israel is already learning lessons, and I'm sure that, as we've done many times in the past, after the war, after we've picked up all the pieces, we will mm. understand exactly what went wrong right. and how to move forward. But for now, the country is focusing on one thing, victory in this war, a war forced on us, a force we will win, so that mm. Hamas can never again perpetrate such atrocities. Right. But, but the soldiers that we've spoken to, Israeli soldiers, reservists, are also saying to us very clearly that they wouldn't be in this position. They wouldn't have to risk their lives if the, if the government had done its job properly. You are right. There is a lot of anger in the country at the failures that led to the atrocities of last week. The Israeli National Security Advisor went on television just an hour ago and said, yes, the state did not step up to the plate. There were failures and we're going to learn the lessons. Uh, but the time for learning lessons will come. At the moment, Israel is still fighting to repel the attack from Hamas, a terrorist organization that fired rockets at us just as we were about to go on air, forcing us to evacuate the studio. Mm. This is a terrorist organization that still holds over 120 mm. Israelis, from babies only a few months old to women. Right. over the age of 80 in captivity. We, don't know, we do not know their condition. We want them back. We want them back immediately. We want them back unconditionally. Mm -hmm. And we're determined to make this a war that will end Hamas's military presence in the Gaza Strip so that it can never perpetrate such m crimes against humanity ever again. Right. No, no one sensible questions the right of the state of Israel to defend itself. But people are questioning, including in this country, whether Israel has the right to break international humanitarian law as it bombs civilians in the Gaza Strip and is about to march in? I'll answer that loaded question. Uh, Israel has a right, not only a right, but a duty to defend itself against this atrocity. That's a right and a duty that's been recognized by the international community. And it's a right and a duty that, as President Biden said this week, if the United States faced a similar atrocity, it would respond in a way that is swift, decisive, and overwhelming. And that is exactly how mm. Israel is responding, in a way that is swift, decisive, and overwhelming. We are doing what we can to minimize civilian casualties on the other side. That is why Israel is asking residents of northern Gaza right. to get out of the combat zones. By the way, the Israeli military just in the last hour released photographic evidence showing that Hamas has set up roadblocks main, along the main streets in the Gaza Strip okay. to stop Gazan civilians from evacuating. Israel is doing everything okay. it can so that the civilians of Gaza will All live, right. while Hamas is doing everything it can to make sure they die and martyr themselves for the perverse cause of jihad. OK. I'm afraid we've run out of time. Thank you very much for coming on the programme, Elon Levy. Thank you very Israeli much for having government. me here.